The Unshackled Waves, episode 161. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. The news cycle has been dominated this past week by the uh, Donald Trump-Kim Jong-un summit in Singapore on Tuesday morning. But on the Unshackled Ways, we still like to focus on what is happening here in Australia. The Liberal Party had its federal council over the weekend, which included John Howard giving a sterling defence of the Turnbull government. Turnbull himself vowed that he would never allow Labor to get away with something like the 2016 Medi-Scare campaign again. Internally, there is still a cloud over the pre-selection of Conservative New South Wales Liberal MP Craig Kelly and GetUp has also officially launched their campaign to defeat Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton in his marginal uh, Queensland seat of Dixon. To discuss this, uh, I'm joined once again by the Unshackled's political editor, Michael Smythe. Michael, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Tim. Now, probably what gave us the most talking points in Australian politics this week was what came out of the uh, Liberal Party Federal Council, which was held in uh, Sydney over the weekend. We had uh, Malcolm Turnbull, he, he got a, a sterling defence of his uh, Prime Ministership and leadership from uh, John Howard, who said that he believes that Malcolm Turnbull can win the, the next election. He pointed to Labor's low primary vote of uh, 37%, but the coalition's is at 36%, so I'm not sure how their math works there. And uh, just uh, last night, uh, Malcolm Turnbull lost his 34th uh, news poll uh, in a row. Uh, the coalition is behind uh, 48-52. Now, uh, John Howard is certainly right that the coalition uh, can win, but certainly I'd say that history is against them. Oh, absolutely. <sighs> How do I put this? Uh, John Howard has to keep the spirits of the Liberal Party faithful high. It's what he does as one of the greatest Liberal Party leaders. It's his job to maintain morale, even after losing in the rod slide of 2007. Don't get me wrong, I like, I like John Howard, but I think he's wrong here. The numbers don't lie. That's the simplest way of pointing it, but there's also another factor of no major party has managed to win a nationwide election with, a, with a, an inferior primary vote compared to the other major party. Well, John so, Howard, he, he obviously points to the fact that he was behind in 98 and 2001 and managed to win. The, 98 is a bit different. 98 was one of those statistical flukes, like Andrew Peacock losing to Bob Hawke in 1990. It shouldn't have happened, but it did happen. He managed to win. Um, Beasley, in the case of 1998, managed to win the... Um, the majority of votes in the electorate, but not the majority of seats in the House of Representatives. That was the difference. However, we've now moved to the point with the introduction of the 151st seat into the House of Representatives as of the next federal election. It's going to be a lot harder to have one of those flukish events happen again, where a party wins more than the more of the popular vote, but less of the number of seats in the House of Representatives. And the thing is, what a lot of people don't realise is that while the minor party, lefties, left, left-wing minor parties will vote Labour second, right-wing minor parties will not. Our One Nation won't necessarily do the same. Other minor parties won't do the same. It's, it's always been odd to me that, uh, given that Turnbull's a moderate and Howard's a conservative, how they have this uh, 
great uh, political friendship because uh, John Howard has been uh, pretty adamant that the Liberals should stick with Malcolm Turnbull when he uh, didn't do the same thing when uh, Tony Abbott's leadership was uh, under a cloud. And uh, when Malcolm Turnbull was going to uh, resign from Parliament after he lost the leadership in 2009, John Howard was one of the people who encouraged him to stay and uh, see, what hap see what happens. Mm -hmm. I have to admit I lost a bit, quite a bit of respect for Howard when he refused to back Abbott as he did in 2015 compared to how he's been somewhat sheltering and defending Turnbull from attacks within the Liberal Party. I, I think from Howard's perspective though, Tim, it's a matter of looking at it from the perspective of the chronic disunity that rocked the Liberal Party in the 80s and the 90s is something he wants to avoid seeing again. And it must be noted as well that Howard was leader of the Liberal Party a few times before he finally won in 1996. And there were leadership changes. There was Peacock, there was Howard, and there was, um, there was Downer at one point. Not to mention all the other people who were never actually leaders of the Liberal Party, but had their uh, inf roles of influence, like the former member for Ryan, John Moore, for example, and even Wilson Tucky. Yes, Wilson Tucky had a big role to play in Roland Howard some, sometime in the 80s. So I think Howard's also got that motivating him to defend Turnbull because he saw, maybe he thought, uh, Abbott is... He's, he, he'll, he'll, he'll bounce back, he'll survive somehow. Whether that assessment is correct is still yet to be seen. But once Turnbull got in and nearly lost the 2016 election, it's at that point maybe Howard started to think, mm, maybe I should advocate for, you know, unity behind the party leadership because I don't want, don't want what happened to him. So what happened to me, rather, to happen to Turnbull? That could be his thinking as well. Also at uh, the Federal Council, uh, Julie Bishop and Scott Morrison also gave rousing speeches to, to rally the, the Liberal uh, troops and Turnbull's uh, speech. He vowed uh, that the Liberals would build a social media army to, to counter Labor lies and said never again will uh, lies like Mediscare, which was the centrepiece of Labor's uh, 2016 election campaign, be allowed to stand. You remember on election night uh, 2016, Malcolm Turnbull uh, lashed out and blamed uh, Mediscare for the, the almost uh, hung parliament. Now, the, the Liberals always say that they're going to get more savvy at the, the social media game and there's always talk they'll create some conservative version, version of get up to, to counter their activities, but I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. I mean, uh, we were, everyone seems to agree that conservatives need to get better at the, the ground and online game, but I'm just not seeing where that's coming from. Hmm. Not to mention the fact, Tim, that most people in the Liberal Party are hardly conservatives anymore. It's... You're right. They, they have been saying this for years, but they haven't done it. There is actually a right-wing version of Get Up called Right On, but it's not affiliated with the Liberal Party. It, and their social media reach is still very limited. Well, I've never heard of it, so there you go. Mm. Well, there you go. And most people haven't heard of it either. I mean... Pardon me. I was, I, when I was, um, this is as an aside, um, I went to a charity event with some members of the National Civic Council in the early 2010s. And I said to one of the um, other guests there, we need a right wing version of Get Up. Why don't you turn the NCC into a right wing version of, of Get Up? And he um denied. But basically did it and did nothing, which is quite disappointing because the guy's a very smart man, but he didn't do anything with it. Right On seems to be a, a newer attempt, partly inspired by Cory Bernardi before he defected from the Liberal Party, but partly a legitimate grassroots response as well. 
The well, thing is, though, he, the fact you Cor- haven't heard yeah. of it. Cory Bernardi that... tried to start one when he was in the Liberal Party called Can Do. Uh, that didn't go anywhere. No, it did not. He also had the Conservative Leadership Foundation on top of that as well. But that also didn't go And, and there was that site that he set up was Australian Majority. What's happened to that? I don't know what's happened to that, actually. Because uh, I'm not a member of Australian Conservatives, as you know. So, um, for a number of very good reasons. No doubt we will hear more of them coming out later on. But, yeah, the, the right doesn't have the ability to mobilise on social media or in general the way the left do. Because the right is fraught, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, the right is fraught with divisions, backstabbings, people punching right, people just, you know, sniping at each other because of some little beef from several years ago in a lot of cases. And it's frustrating. That's why the left are going to continue to run rings around the right is because of the fact that the right has so many egos that they're not ever going to get along. I mean, look at... Look at your friend Clive, for example, case in point. Mm. Pauline, look at Corey, look at even Catter. I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, I call Catter right wing. Um, Relatively speaking, you know, every minor party is so incredibly unrealized and unactualized in power because the power is based around the leaders of the parties, not the memberships themselves. And even Australian Conservatives has that problem. But I digress. My point is... No one on the right seems to have gotten the thing and doesn't seem to have figured out the trick, the knack to mobilizing social media in the same way that the left have done with ruthless efficiency. Oh, it's probably where the, the left uh, being collectivist that actually works to their advantage. <laughs> no, exactly. Just shut up until after the election and then we'll talk. But then the Labour Party ignores them anyway, so... Now, what also got attention at the Federal Council was uh, two of the motions uh, that were passed, and we have to emphasise that these are non-binding motions. They're they're basically more just an opportunity for members to say how they feel about certain issues. So the the Council uh, voted for uh, the ABC to be privatised, except in uh, regional areas. It was carried by a two-to-one margin, but uh, Scott Morrison within hours said it's it's not going to happen um now it's interesting that they said um except in regional areas because i i've come to this this point of view that um you know we still need the abc services in regional areas for emergency broadcasts and also i think for in the age of the internet paywall you need a free source of news but we don't need ABC Comedy, Triple J, or even the children's uh, channels. And that's exactly right, Tim. The, I was talking with quite a few political colleagues over the past couple of days, and they said that they were amazed by the fact that this motion got up. But what they don't realise is that this motion has been in the minds of a lot of Liberal Party members. Even back when I was in the Liberal Party, it was still in their minds they just didn't want to go through with it because they're afraid of either the relentless march of neoliberalism or they were afraid that the regional areas would get left behind and so the only way that this vote could pass people will say oh this is a, a groundbreaking vote well not really because a it's only at a convention level and b the the parliamentary party is under no obligation whatsoever to enforce it as policy, at least not while they're in government. Actually, even when they're not in government, they're not under um, any obligation to do that. And another thing is, it was only that caveat of except in regional areas that allowed the vote to actually be passed. If it hadn't had that caveat in there, it still would not have passed, despite how much everyone in the Liberal Party hates the ABC. And uh, Labour, uh, they've already started putting out uh, Facebook posts saying, uh, save the ABC. Labour's got a campaign website. I think it's save the, save the ABC.org.au. They think they're on a, on a winner with uh, campaigning to 
uh, save the ABC. Uh, Bill Shorten, before he went on Q&A this week, said that he'd uh, reverse the Turnbull government's uh, cuts to the ABC, which is actually just uh, not increasing their funding uh, over the next three years. And uh, the ABC, it's, it still has, uh, uh, despite the fact that it doesn't rate most, most of the time, there, there's still uh, widespread uh, public opposition to, to privatising it. That's why I think this idea of a slim down uh, ABC uh, is is better, and it's funny we were mentioning Mediscare before because uh, you, you can see history sort of re repeating itself. Labor will have Corflute saying uh, S uh, save the ABC, and then Turnbull will have his own Corflute saying I guarantee that the, the ABC stays. Well, the Labor Party has been notorious at being disingenuous in terms of the campaigns and. To be fair, the Medi-Scare campaign was an outright blatant lie, but under political communication could not be prosecuted as such. Um, it, will ha it will probably happen again, to be honest. I think it's just a matter of time. Uh, the fact that they've already started means that they've probably already got something in the works for the by-elections, and if not for the by-elections, then certainly for the general election. And the other motion uh, passed by the council was uh, to move the Australian embassy in Israel from uh, Tel Aviv to Jerusalem in line uh, to what uh, President, United States President Donald Trump has, uh, has done uh, recently. Uh, now, Julie Bishop has already said that Australia won't be doing this, and even Josh Frydenberg uh, said, who is Jewish himself, said that this won't happen. It seems to me that this symbolic act of moving the the embassy it's 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 virtue signaling but in, in this case it actually causes uh violence it, it just seems it's it it's not really achieving a anything it's except to say oh you know we you know we, we recognize that you know, jerusalem is the, the the capital of israel and uh you know damn the consequences if um you know there's going to be you know violence because of a result well the, the the cold hard numbers of running the embassy in tel aviv versus moving the embassy to jerusalem say it's prohibitively expensive i mean we've got i would probably be more supportive of it if we didn't have such a stifling so um such stifling debt problem but at this stage we can't afford it you know, I mean, it's a nice idea, but we can't afford it. Plus, there's extra security that you need in Jerusalem. Because you got to remember, the old city is partitioned as well, is effectively partitioned between uh, Israelis and Arabs. Sorry, Arab Palestinians and Israeli Palestinians. So it's a matter of saying, well, what's the benefit for us to move our embassy there when almost every other country in the world still has their embassy in Tel Aviv? Plus, we need to negotiate something in terms of mediating peace between the PLO, Hamas, and its Israel. Then it's better to be able to coordinate with all of our friendly nations and their diplomats in one place rather than schlepping from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. You, you know what I mean? It's just, a, it's, just, it's just common sense to keep it in Tel Aviv for now. Yeah, realistically, uh, those are some, some important points that you uh, you make there. I, I was more thinking of the fact that, uh, given that there was so much bloodshed with the, the US one, that I don't think we should basically uh, create more. But yes, there, there there is a reason why the the embassies are in Tel Aviv in the first place because of the the reasons you just outlined. Exactly, and the violence which we've touched on. It, it... It's going to happen regardless of whether we move it or not, but it will put Australian lives at risk if we do move it to Tel Aviv. And that's what I was hinting at before when I was saying the security issues are uh, greatly compounded by moving it from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Now, one of the side uh, 
shows that's going on in the federal Liberal Party at the moment is that of the, the pre-selection of uh, conservative uh, backbencher uh, Craig Kelly. Uh, now the uh, New South Wales moderates who run the Liberal Party want to roll him and apparently Kent Jones, who's the New South Wales Liberal Vice President, has got the numbers to uh, defeat him in pre-selection. Now he's, Craig Kelly's been def uh, defended by uh, Tony Abbott, warning there'll be turmoil if uh, Kelly is rolled. And even uh, John Howard uh, mentioned what a good uh, member uh, Craig Craig Kelly was in in his speech. Now, uh, for those who are not familiar with Craig Kelly, if you watch Sky News, you'll know exactly who he is. He's on there nearly nearly every day. He's pr probably the the issue that he campaigns on most is uh, energy security and affordability is very much part of that uh, Monash forum. I, I'd say he's a su supporter of Abbott, but he's never he he he, he never makes the case. You can tell he's never being malicious when, when he put his ca case forward. He, he's, he's not doing it to cause trouble because he actually genuinely believes it. He comes across as a real uh, genuine person. So it's, it's not like they're, uh, 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 these moderates in New South Wales Liberal Party are trying to get rid of a troublemaker. Mm, exactly. And maybe I'm a bit biased here, but Kelly's a pretty good guy. Mm. It's... <laughs> The thing is, as well, is he has been advocating on those policies, um, on those areas, rather, that you've mentioned. He has also uh, advocated in the area of law and, you know, upholding basic laws and, you know, basic civic virtues. And that's something that has earned him a lot of ire as well from the left. Not as much as Peter Dutton, because Peter Dutton is actually Minister of the Crown, Kelly is not. But, you know, give it a few years if somehow Kelly decides to stay in Parliament and seize off this challenge from the moderates in New South Wales, or the black hand, as Chris Pine jokingly put it, then, you know, he could end up being as hated, if not more so, than Dutton, because Kelly does tend to be outspoken on those matters that are important to him and important to our country as well. I think and you mentioned that John Howard actually spoke in favour of Kelly as being a very good member. Mm. The interesting thing is he, and you, you may or may not remember this, Tim, but he actually advocated in a similar way for Peter King in 2004. Yet he also said that Turnbull could run against him and then pulled out his support from King once Turnbull had on the numbers to roll roll um, Peter King and the Wentworth FDC FEC or FDC depending on what they call it down there. Anyway it's just it, it's interesting you know just because you have praise from someone doesn't mean you're going to necessarily have their backing and if the moderates do decide to make a move they'll they'll get away with it because of the fact that uh, the idea is that the Liberal Party membership are supposed to have access to directly pre-selecting the incumbent members if needs be without rancor on the part of the incumbents uh, so i think the reason why this is being seen as such a big deal is because uh the new south wales liberal party doesn't have grassroots democracy so it's it's more being seen as the the faceless men in the new south wales liberal party just taking out someone they don't like Mm, that too. Actually, you're right. They don't have that in New South Wales. Um, they don't have that direct, uh, direct voting like they do in Queensland, down there, which is a huge problem for them. Is what um, Abbott and a few others were trying to rectify, but failed to succeed in doing. So. I mean, but it's politics, though. I mean, even when you do have direct democracy, to be fair, it's all there are always going to be people in this art in pulling the strings behind the scenes. And yes, the Liberal Party does have factions as well, they're just less overt than, say, the Labour parties. Yeah. Turnbull was very careful not to say that again at the, the federal council meeting. Oh my goodness, that was a train wreck because I because I quit the Liberal Party in 2014. It was in 2015, I said to myself, no, nah, never again. And I will not be rejoining the Liberal Party. 
any time in the foreseeable future. And then when he said that, I thought, oh, we're not run by factions. And, you know, I mean, the Liberal Party does, their membership of the Liberal Party does have a tendency to say, oh, no, we're not like the Labour Party. We don't have factions. They do. They do. They're, they're not as clear cut or ideological as those in the Labour Party, but they do have factions. Usually they're around about, uh, ironically, cults of personality, as it were, strong men or strong women who are leading factions or groupings to boost their profile, to boost the profile of their candidate and to maybe get ahead and get some more staffer jobs. But it's not it's not as clear cut as in the Labour Party. But they're there. The point that they, the fact that Turnbull made that massive foul par and said, oh, we're not run by factions. It was a huge foul part because everyone knew, because this, this isn't a safe or relatively safe space for the uh, Liberal Party membership. And they thought, oh my God, are you serious right now? Basically was their attitude because, you know, we don't have factions. Yeah, we do. We just say we don't, but when we're here, come on, let's call a spade a spade. Now, another Liberal MP uh, under threats uh, at the next election, not from uh, pre-selection, but from external forces, is Home Affairs Minister uh, Peter Dutton. He, of course, uh, is somebody that the left hates, uh, not just uh, because of his work in immigration and home affairs, but because he is such a, a, a culture warrior on uh, uh, pre uh, pretty much all the, uh, the the hot button issues he's commented on uh, corporate virtue signaling uh, uh, and other things uh, su such as that now uh, get up uh, who we were talking about before they've uh, just launched a uh, $225,000 campaign to, to oust Peter Dutton from his marginal seat of Dixon, which is in northwest Brisbane. Uh, now, there was a 5% uh, swing against him at the 2016 federal election, which means he currently sits on 1.66%. Uh, now, he's talked about as a future prime minister, uh, but obviously can't be prime minister if he's not there. Mm, that's true. And when I wrote my article, um, Catch 30 Part 2, uh, a couple of months ago, I pointed out that GetUp was gunning for him and for his seat. Not necessarily to replace him with anyone specifically, but just to get rid of him in general. I made the comment that if the Liberal Party had decided to change leaders and had gone to Dutton, Dutton would retain, definitely retain the seat, GetUp notwithstanding. But as things are now, he's not going to make a challenge. He could very well lose his seat. And I hope he doesn't, because I actually personally like Dutto. I hope he doesn't lose his seat. I hope he holds on to it. But it's not looking good. I mean, the Liberal Party faithful are going to have to put a lot of hours and time and a lot of boxing into the Dixon electorate for him to retain his seat, at the way things stand anyway unless Labour has a massive catastrophe and just, and their lead evaporates overnight. If they wanted to get the, the LMP a lot of volunteers, they could just launch a Save Dutton website. That'd be guaranteed to get a lot of interest. They may have one in the works, actually. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I haven't been in the Liberal Party for a few years now, but it wouldn't surprise me if they had one in the works planned. It was interesting that, because uh, I, I read this article, because, yeah, GetUp had been raising money uh, against Dutton for a while now, and uh, uh, Dutton is, he, he's not trying to show that he's scared, saying, well, if GetUp want to fight, the, uh, they'll get one. They're, they're, they're going to be very strategic. They're not going to just go on about the uh, social justice issues of uh, asylum seekers. Uh, they're, they're actually going to campaign on local issues in the, in the electorate and try and basically manipulate the voters that way. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what you do. I mean, you've got to remember what people need to realize about the Dixon electorate is that it is a very mixed bag of demographics. You've got a lot of young people, you also have a lot of older people as well. A lot of older people are, I don't want to say gullible, but they're more trusting. So if you have people who seem in earnest, even if they're deceptive, perfidi deceptive perfidious scumbag commies, they if they come across as genuine, they're going to be received warmly by trusting older people, trusting people in general. 
oh, you look like my son or my grandson or my daughter or granddaughter. What, 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 what have you got to? What have you got for me to look at? And then they'll say something. Did you know the Liberal Party is playing to gut Medicare, for example? Or the Liberal Party's playing to the ABC. Like, oh, that's horrible. How do I fix this? I turn around on the back and you see how to vote. But the Liberal Party lost, and that would destroy Dunn. Um, the Liberal Party. Actually, I like that idea you had. Save Dutton. I was going to say save Dutton, save Dixon, but <laughs> but you know, I like that idea too. Um, yeah, a lot of people are very trusting, and uh, during election time, a lot of people are very on edge, but they're also very trusting. So, basically, whoever gets to them first, in terms of convincing them how to vote, will win. And I'm not talking about the um, the how to vote cards. I'm talking about those who actually engage with the prospective voters. They yeah. generally have a better tr better chance than those who don't. And we've already discussed, we know who's more aggressive at doing that. Mm, exactly. Well, uh, thanks again, Michael, for uh, joining me. We actually didn't have a lot to discuss with regard to Australian politics, but Parliament I is back this week. I'm sure there'll be, uh, pl it will provide us uh, plenty of talking points to, to come back uh, next week and discuss. Mm, indeed. Thank you, too. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. Please make sure to grab your tickets for Stefan Molyneux and Lauren Southern's tour in Australia this July. They'll be visiting Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth and Brisbane, as well as Auckland. The tour is being hosted by new events company Axomatic Events, and you can book your place by visiting axomatic.events. Axomatic is also hosting a local name. If you're in Brisbane, you can meet the famous Mama Warrior Against Unsafe Schools Political Posting Mama, aka Marie Rancy in person. She'll be appearing at the Mount Gravitz Bowls Club at 7pm on Thursday the 22nd of June. Tickets can be purchased at axomatic.events slash politicalpostingmama. Another big name coming down under is former UKIP leader Nigel Farage this September. He is also visiting Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth, Brisbane and Auckland. Auckland. It's being brought by the same people who brought you Milo Live last year. Tickets, including various VIP passes, can be booked at nigellive.com.au. The True Blue Cruise annual Asley Pride Flag March is nearly upon us. It was one of the first events we covered out in the field in Melbourne last year, and we'll be back there again uh, this year. Uh, the date is this Sunday, the 24th of June, and begins at 12 p.m. at the Royal Exhibition Building. This type of event probably matters now more than ever, given that uh, nationalists all over the world are being uh, persecuted. The campaign against racism and fascism will be there to try and shut it down. So it's important that there's as much support there for uh, the Patriots and the True Blue crew as possible. Also, don't forget, if you want to take The Unshackled even further and score some awesome rewards, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash theunshackled. Don't forget, we have our online store, Upright Market, where you can purchase Unshackled merchandise and other gear for right-thinking people. So thanks once again for your company, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.